Hi there and welcome to my Ionic 3 and Google Maps video. By the end of this video, we will have made this simple application that shows a Google map on screen and of course also displays a marker at a particular location. Let's dive in and get started. So our journey starts off at the Google Maps API's documentation and where we need to go is the Google Maps JavaScript API. Let's select that and then we can hit get a key. When we hit the get a key button, we'll be able to enable the Google Maps API for one of our Google projects and then get an API key which we can use inside of our app. Once you have that key, keep it somewhere safe as we'll need it in a second when we come to include the Google Maps SDK. So let's start off by generating a project with the Ionic CLI, such as Ionic Start, Ionic Maps, and we'll use the blank template that simply creates a new Ionic project based on the blank template named Ionic Maps. Now, notice at this point in time, we're not using the Cordova plugin for the Google Maps API. We totally could if we wanted to, but at this point, we're looking at the JavaScript SDK. When that is all finished, we can CD into Ionic-Maps. And then, of course, we can open this up using either Ionic Serve or Ionic Lab. I like to use Ionic Lab, so let's go with Ionic Lab. So, as you can see, we now have our application here on the right and our code here on the left. So let's head over to index.html and that's inside of our source directory and then index.html. I'm then going to add the Google Maps SDK to our project. So let's add a new script and this will have the source of the maps.googleapis.com slash maps API and then we also want to do slash JS and we need now a question mark. After this point, we need to pass in our key equals to and then whatever your API key is. So paste in that API key that we copied earlier on. At the same time, we also need to add async and defer to the script. And once that is done, we can then continue developing our app because we now have the Google Maps SDK inside of our app. Let's now head over to our home.html and what I'm going to do is change the title to Google Maps. I'm going to give this a color of primary and we'll change the content to get rid of the padding and also add a div. We'll give this the ID of map and we'll also give this a template reference of hash map that simply allows us to access this DOM node inside of our TypeScript using the view child decorator. And we'll take a look at that in a second. So now we can head over to our home.ts and here we can import the view child and the element reference. So the first thing we'll do is capture a reference to that div that we just made. And remember, we give this the template reference variable of map. So we'll call this the map reference. And that is, of course, of type element reference. So just to check that we have everything working, when the view has loaded, we will console.log this dot map ref. And that will just tell us whether we have access to that div. So we can open up the developer console. And we should now see this element reference, which has a native element. And that native element is the div with the reference ID here of a map. Awesome, and this is where we're gonna bootstrap the Google Maps SDK into. So we're gonna put our map inside of this div. So that's what we'll be doing next. And that's gonna be done with a function that we're gonna call show map. Show map needs to have a location. So let's create ourselves a location. This has to be lat and long. So that can be equal to a new google.maps.latlong. And then we need to pass in a particular lat and long. Once we've done that, you'll notice that we have this red underline for Google. It's effectively saying that we don't have any types here for this Google. What we need to do is outside of our component and our class, we need to say declare var Google if type any. This will stop TypeScript from complaining and we no longer have that error. So once we save this, 
we now have a reference to this location. And the next thing to do is to set up some map options. So let's make an options. And then we can define the center. So this is where our viewport is going to be. And that's going to be our location. We can then do things like alter the zoom level if we did something like 10. And once we've defined our location and we've also defined our options, we now need to actually put the map on screen. So we need a global reference as far as our homepage is concerned to the reference of our map. So let's put map equal to any. And we can say that this dot map is equal to a new Google dot maps dot map. This is a capital M. We need to pass in the map reference and then we need the native element of that map reference and any options. So that's the options we just created with the center and the zoom level. Let's save the file and see what happens. So far, nothing. And that's because we need to add this dot show map into our ion view did load. This essentially means that when the home page has loaded, our map should display on screen. So if we save our file, we see that nothing actually appears on screen at this moment in time. And that's because we need to define a width and height for our home page. So if we head over to home.scss, we can then give our map a height of 100%. And once we do that, we now have a map on screen and it's pointed at our location here at London. So if we wanted to, we could drag the street view on and we could start looking at street view. But what I also want to do is add a marker and I'm going to add a marker at our location where we start the map. So let's make a new function named add marker. And our add marker function will take a position and it will also take the map. It will simply return a new google.maps.marker at a particular position on a particular map. So then whenever we want, all we need to do is pass in the reference to our map as well as a reference to a lat long, and we should be able to display a marker. So if we say this dot add marker inside of our show map function, we can add a marker at the location in which we set the viewport for our map. And also we can pass in this dot map. Arguably at this point, we could just leave our map equal to a constant inside of this function and get rid of our global map variable. So we don't have to use this dot map anywhere. But we may need it outside of this function in the future. It depends on how we want to structure our component. If we save the file, we should now see a marker on screen. And we certainly do. And that's at the viewport of our map. So we can change things like the zoom. If we said zoom 20, we'd zoom further in on our map. We could also change things like disable the street view control. So we could make that equal to false. And you'll notice now that we can no longer use street view when this refreshes. There's also a variety of different map type IDs that we can use. So if we had map type ID and we tried roadmap, I'm also going to change the zoom to be 15. You could see that this is the default version. So we have now a roadmap but we could use things like a satellite. And that would give us a satellite view of the particular location and we could zoom in once again. We have things like hybrids. And that gives us a hybrid view of the normal and satellite view as well as terrain and terrain simply allows us to see the physical map based on the terrain information. We can also change this dynamically. So for example, if we had a set timeout, we could then use map.set map type ID and we could set this to simply be satellite after three seconds. So here we have a standard map based on the terrain, but after three seconds, we're changing that to be a satellite map. So we've looked at how we can change some different maps. We've also looked at after three seconds, how we could change something. We could change the map type ID to instead be something like satellite. We've looked at adding different markers. 
So that's how we implement a variety of different things inside of our Ionic application using the Google Maps SDK. The possibilities are literally endless. You can do so many different combinations of things and you can tailor it directly to your application. I suggest that you check out the documentation for the Google Maps JavaScript API if you'd like to customize this even further. Don't forget there is a native plugin for Google Maps when you're coming to implement this on your Android and iOS applications. And you should check that out. It's available within Ionic Native. And you may find that it does increase performance when compared to the JavaScript SDK. But this is how we do it in JavaScript, as well as making quite a few customizations.